These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Okay, so the problem here is to find the rate law. This is actually a really popular type of question that you're, you're um, almost guaranteed to see. This is one of the things that's almost guaranteed to be on the test. All right, so yeah, I guess I've seen a lot of practice tests. So I've kind of thought, so I know that, so when you keep this constant, and you double the concentration of this, then you double the rate. So then, I set up like a, some of the exponent. Now, first of all, what is the general form of the rate expression going to be? What, what's the rate expression going to look like here? So K, the concentration of NO, and the concentration of CL, to X, some, to X, some exponents. That's right. Now, when we're working with simple rate problems, we imagine that we're just focusing on the reaction at the initial beginning. So we're only focusing on the forward reaction. There hasn't been time for any product to accumulate to do the reverse reaction. That's the only type of problem you're likely to see very much in the text. So the rate expression doesn't involve any of the products, only the starting materials. That's one big difference already from equilibrium constants. Equilibrium constants involve both starting materials and products. But the rate expression generally is thought of at the initial point. That's only involving the starting materials. Another key thing is, can we just use this stoichiometric coefficient for the exponent? Well, not for the rate expression. That's confusing because you do use the stoichiometric coefficients from the overall reaction for the equilibrium constants. Uh, when you're doing equilibrium constants, the coefficients from the overall reaction give you the exponents, but they don't give you the exponents for the rate expression. How do you get the exponents from the rate expression? From the experimental data over here. And what you want to try to do is find a pair of trials where one of the concentrations is constant. So here's a pair of trials where one of the concentrations is constant. So we could say that a rate of 0.36 is equal to k times 0.1 times 0.2. You see where I got all of this. So I'm using the second line here. The rate is 0.36. Oh, I can't forget the exponents. Okay. By the way, these numbers don't go in brackets. Because we're not, this is not the concentration of 0.1, it's just the number 0.1. All right, and then what would the equation look like for the first row? The first row, maybe the other two. We also wanted to look at this row, right? Remember, we're going to compare these two cases to each other. Well, for this row, it would look like 0.18 equals k, 0.1 to the x times 0.1 to the y. I'm just focusing on these two rows because they happen to have one of the concentrations constant. Now the next trick is to divide the two equations. It's always legal to divide two equations. What are we going to get on the left-hand side when we divide these equations? Notice that the k's will cancel. So it doesn't matter that we don't know what k is. And also the point 0.1 terms will cancel. That was why it was such a good idea to pick a pair of trials where one of the concentrations was constant. Over 0.1y. Yeah. Now remember that here's a rule from algebra a to the y over b to the y is a over b to the y. If two numbers are both to the same exponent, you can, so to speak, factor the exponent out. Now you can just use trial and error. What exponent would make this equation true? Well, the exponent 1 would make this equation true. So notice the key math steps here where we put both of these numbers in a single parenthesis to this exponent y, and then we just use trial and error to figure out what y is. So now we know that y is 1. Now we have to figure out what x is. Yeah, which two rows should we use now? 
Also, um, let me point out something I did here that made my life easier. I put the bigger rate on top. It makes your life easier if you put the bigger rate on top so that you don't deal with too many fractions. We can expect this is probably going to come out to be an integer. So what integer would it likely be? Maybe we should uh, test that on paper. <laughs> Looks like 4 to me. Point thirty six times 4 is 1.44. So generally speaking, you're usually going to get an integer here. So did I do that right? So that means that this is approximately 4. This is experimental data, so it's never going to come out to be exact. But this is very, very close to 4. Except, except four. Notice if you'd rounded off too much, you could have gotten this wrong. If you did 1.5 over 0.3, you'd get 5 here. So. See again why it was a good idea to use two rows where one of the concentrations was constant. So this term is going to cancel out. Point 0.2 to the x divided by point 0.1 to the x is point 0.2 divided by point 0.1 to the x, which is 2 to the x. And what would x be? Notice that we're not going to learn any fancy algebra or formulas for figuring out x. You just use trial and error. It's going to be something like 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So just plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 and see which exponent works. Well, here x has to be 2 in order for this equation to work. So that told us that this exponent was 2. OK. So um, the basic approach here is pick a pair of trials where one of the concentrations is constant. Uh, you write the general rate expression, and then you plug in everything you can into the rate expression for those two rows. Always try to put the bigger rate on top, because otherwise here we would end up with 0.25, which would have been a lot harder to work with. So it makes your life easier by putting the bigger rate on top when you do the division. Okay, and we got one thing left. We have to figure out what k is. Uh, so then just plug in one of the random rates. That's right. Just pick whichever of these lines, which of these lines is going to be easiest to work with. This one has a bunch of point ones, so this will probably be easy. I would say this would be easiest because it's got all these point ones in it. Okay. So I can say point one So to get rid of the decimal on the bottom, we multiply the top and the bottom by 1,000. We can move this decimal point three times to the right. We move this decimal point. Did you get 180? Yeah. Okay. 